go round the mountain, singing our very own song. When we're on our way, we shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Magic is what we like to do, and if it goes wrong, we cry boo hoo. But on a good day, we shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. I'm ready if you are, Doris. Everybody now. Here we go round the mountain, singing our very own song. Yes, we're on our way, so shout hooray with a rat a tat tat and a bing bang bong. Hello, Morris. Hello, Doris. What's happening on Magic Mountain today? Well, everyone's very busy, especially me. Why? Because I've got a very important story to tell you. Oh. It's all about what happened in the magic garden the other day. Poor Digby the gardener lost his robot motor and Leroy the lion had to get on his roller skates and... I and wish then they... Leroy wouldn't go quite so fast on those roller skates. He nearly knocked me over the other day. Morris, please don't interrupt. I must tell you what happened. All right, Doris. Everyone's listening. Just tell us the story. Digby and the Jungle One day, Leroy the Lion got a message on his headphones from Digby the Robot Gardener. Leroy skated off as quick as he could to the Magic Garden. Hey, Digby, what's the matter? Spot's taken my robot motor, whispered Digby, and he's gone and buried it. Somewhere in the magic garden. A big tear trickled down Digby's nose. Without my motor, I can't do any gardening. And now I can't find Spot. Digby looked so sad that Leroy felt sorry for him. He looked round the magic garden and saw how high the plants had grown because Digby hadn't been able to trim them. Leroy shook his head. Hey, that spot's a really naughty dog. Leroy patted Digby's shoulder. You stay here, Digby, he said. I'll go and look for Spot. The plants were now so high that the magic garden was more like a jungle than a garden. As Leroy skated along, he had an idea. What fun! This is a jungle and I'm a lion. The lion is the king of the jungle, so that means I'm a king now. Just then, he caught sight of Spot at the bottom of the garden. Hey, Spot, what are you doing? Hiding Digby's motor, said Spot, but only to tease him. Dig it up at once, Leroy said. I'm the king of the jungle. You must do as I say. You are not a king, said Spot. And this is not a jungle. It's the magic garden. It was the magic garden, said Leroy. But now you've taken Digby's motor, he's too weak to do any gardening. This garden is more a jungle than a garden now, so I am the king. Spot looked worried. But if you dig up Digby's motor and give it back to him, said Leroy, he'll be able to cut back all these jungly plants and the magic garden will be a real garden again. That means you won't be the king and then I won't have to do what you say, said Spot. So Spot dug up the motor and they took it back to Digby. Leroy opened the little door in Digby's back and put the motor in. Digby felt better at once. Oh, thank you for getting my motor back, Leroy, he said. Now for some gardening. And he whizzed off round the magic garden at top speed. 
soon all the plants in the garden were neat and tidy again. Bye, everybody, cried Leroy. Bye, Leroy, said Spot. Now you're not a king, I can do exactly what I like. And as Leroy skated off, he looked back and saw Spot starting to dig up a plant. A very naughty look on his face. Hello, Doris. Hello, Morris. Oh, it's Stephen. Hello, Stephen. We always love having visitors on Magic Mountain, don't we, Morris? Of course we do, especially if they know any songs. Ah, well, I've got a song. It's all about animals. Ooh. And I want you to be the first to hear it. Hooray! It's called Come Into the Ark. Come into the ark, said Noah to the animals. Come into the ark, my pets. In walked the elephants, the frogs and the horses, the cows and the cats, and the little mama sets. Come, said Noah, to the birds and the insects. Come into the ark, my loves. In went the larks and the bees and the beetles, the butterflies, the robins, the earwigs and the doves. Come into the ark, said Noah to the fishes. Come into the ark with No, said the shrimps and the whales and the herrings, there's far more room in the sea. What a lot of animals in the song. Mm. I wonder how many there were. Well, Doris, I think I can help you there. Uh, two elephants, that's two. Two frogs, that's two and two, uh, four, um, um, two horses. Shall we count the animals later, Morris? We haven't got time now. Why, what's happening? What's happening? Denise has got a story for us. Oh, good. What's it about? Well, if you just keep quiet for a moment, Denise will tell you. <laughs> My naughty little sister, the unexpected visitor. One cold and frosty morning, when I was a little girl, and my sister was a very little girl, our mother and Mrs. Jones next door did lots and lots of washing and pegged it out on their clotheslines. There was a lot of hard, cold snow on the ground and there was a cold wind blowing and my little sister was kneeling by the kitchen window watching mother's washing and mrs coco jones washing my little sister was laughing because all the washing was frozen the wind had blown it and the frost had frozen it into funny shapes mother's big sheets had gone all pointy looking and as for my sister's own little knickers the wind had blown them out into funny little balloons and the frost had frozen them into funny little balloons and they bobbed and bobbed on the line. Will they stay like that now? My sister said. Will they always be hard and funny looking? Oh no, Mother told her. The sun will thaw them and the wind will blow the water out of the clothes and they'll be quite soft again. I'm very glad about that, 
said my little sister. I shouldn't like the loony knickers very much. And she went back to the window to see if the wind had blown them soft yet. Then suddenly, my sister shouted and shouted. Mother, look! Look! She said. A big white washing thing fell out of the sky on Mrs. Coco's garden. Mother said, Good gracious! And looked out of the window. But she couldn't see anything. But my sister jumped and jumped on the window seat. She was so excited. It fell down! It fell down, she said, and jumped and jumped. You'll fall down too if you aren't careful, our mother said. I saw it, I saw it, said my naughty little sister in a cross voice, because she thought my mother wasn't being interested. It was all white and sheety looking. And she might have shown off and been very cross indeed, only just then... We heard Mrs. Coco calling and calling, and we all ran out into the cold and frosty garden without thinking about our coats even. But dear Mrs. Coco was saying, Help! Oh, help! Oh, yes. My little sister had seen something come out of the sky, but it wasn't washing. And I don't think it really fell. But it must have looked as if it did. It was a great white bird. A great white bird with a long, long neck and a black and yellow beak. Why, said Mother, it's a swan. And so it was. My sister knew swans. She'd seen them in the park. Sometimes we'd gone to take bread to them. So now she had a good idea. She said, give him some bread. Mrs. Coco. Mrs. Coco stopped being frightened and she said, What a clever girl you are! And she hurried indoors to find a big piece of bread for the swan. That was just what the swan wanted. He turned down his bendy head and snapped with his black and yellow beak. And he swallowed up the piece of bread at once. When Mr. Coco came home and saw the swan, he said, That old fellow comes from the park. He's been out before. He said that a man would have to come and collect it. Presently, two men came to Mrs. Coco's house with a little green van. They said they knew the swan very well indeed. They said he was a bit of a rover. Then they asked everyone to go indoors so that the swan wouldn't be upset. They said they knew just how to deal with him. We went indoors, but we watched from a bedroom window where the swan couldn't see us. We saw the man and his friend throw some special food to the swan that it seemed to like very much. One of the men kept throwing it and walking backwards, and the swan followed, eating right out of Mrs. Coco's back gate. The man threw more food and more food until the swan came to the van. And it followed the food up to the van and up a little plank into the back of the van. And when it was inside and they had made it comfortable, the two men drove the swan back to its home in the park. <laughs> Morris, do you like cats? Why do you want to know, Morris? Because Carol wants to say a poem about them. Oh, well, yes, I love cats. And I love dogs, too. I don't suppose you know any poems about dogs, do you? No, Doris, just cats. Shh, listen. Cats. Cats sleep anywhere. Any table, any chair. Top of piano, window ledge. In the middle, on the edge. Open drawer. Empty shoe, anybody's lap will do. Fitted in a cardboard box, in the cupboard with your frocks. Anywhere, they don't care. Cats sleep 
anywhere. Hello, Morris. Hello, Doris. Where is everyone? I've been all over Magic Mountain and I can't find anyone. I told you, everyone's very busy. Digby and Leroy and Spot are in the Magic Garden and I'm getting ready to sing. Sing? Oh, no. Morris, I like singing. Besides, I'm very good at it. Oh, are you? Well, let's hear you then. Uh, what are you going to sing? One of my favourite nursery rhymes, Bar Bar Black Sheep. Oh, well, if you must. I may even join in. Bar Bar Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for my master and one for my dame. And one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Bar Bar Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, three bags full. One for my master and one for my dame. And one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Ba ba black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, yes sir, yes, yes sir, three bags full. One, one for my master and one for my dame. And one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Morris, oh. you sing beautifully if you really try. I always try, Doris, but sometimes I sound good and sometimes... Not so good? Exactly. <laughs> I... Hey, what do you mean? I'm only teasing, Morris. I want another story. Now, don't be upset, Morris. Stephen is going to tell us all about Goldilocks. <laughs> Goldilocks and the Three Bears There was once a little girl who had hair as bright and shining and yellow as buttercups. Her name was Goldilocks. She lived with her mother and father in a house near a big dark wood. Every morning she went into the garden to play and every morning her mother said to her, don't go into the wood, Goldilocks. You might get lost. But Goldilocks longed to go into the wood and see what was there. I'm sure the wood is full of exciting things, she said to herself. One day, she walked out of her garden and ran and ran until she reached the wood. Birds chirped and fluttered in the trees and butterflies danced in the grass. A rabbit winked at her with one dark eye and then went hop-hopping away down a little path. Goldilocks followed the rabbit. At last she came to a clearing in the wood and there stood a neat little blue and white cottage. Oh, it's so pretty, thought Goldilocks. I must go inside. She ran up to the door and knocked. There was no answer, but the door Hello? swung open. Goldilocks went inside. In the middle of the cottage was a wooden table, and on the table were three plates of porridge. A big one, a middle-sized one, and a small one. Goldilocks tasted the porridge on the big plate, oh, but it was too hot. She tasted the porridge on the middle-sized plate, but it was too cold. She tasted the porridge on the small plate, mm, and it was just right, so she ate it all up. <coughs> then she saw three chairs, a big one, a middle-sized one, and a small one. She sat on the big chair, oh, but it was too hard. She sat on the middle-sized chair, oh, no. but it was too soft. She sat on the small chair and she was just getting comfortable when there was a loud crash. The chair broke all to pieces and Goldilocks fell to the floor. Oh dear, this chair must be for a very small person, said Goldilocks. But she was not at all hurt, so she picked herself up and went up the stairs. At the top of the stairs was a bedroom 
with three beds in it. A big one, a middle-sized one, and a small one. Goldilocks tried the big bed, but it was too hard. She tried the middle-sized bed, but it was too soft. She tried the little bed, and it was so comfortable that she settled down and was soon fast asleep. While she was sleeping, the three bears who lived in the cottage came home from their walk in the wood. I am hungry for my plate of porridge, boomed Father Bear. So am I, cried Mother Bear. So am I, squeaked Baby Bear. But when they saw the plates on the table, they were astonished. Who's been eating my porridge? boomed Father Bear. Who's been eating my porridge? cried Mother Bear. Who's been eating my porridge? squeaked Baby Bear, and eaten it all up. Then they looked around at their chairs. Who's been sitting on my chair? boomed Father Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair? cried Mother Bear. Who's been sitting on my chair? squeaked Baby Bear and broken it all to pieces. The three bears went upstairs and opened the bedroom door. Who's been sleeping in my bed? boomed Father Bear. Who's been sleeping in my bed? cried Mother Bear. Who's been sleeping in my bed? squeaked Baby Bear, and she's still there. Goldilocks woke up with a start. She was so alarmed to see three bears looking at her that she leapt out of bed and ran down the stairs, past the chairs and the plates of porridge, and out of the cottage into the wood. She ran and ran until she got home. Goldilocks, where have you been? said her mother. I've been calling and calling and calling you. Oh, mother, said Goldilocks, I went into the wood and saw three bears. A big one, a middle-sized one, and a small one. Well, 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 said her mother. Sit down, Goldilocks, and tell me all about it. favourite animals, Stephen? <laughs> hamsters, of course, Morris. Oh, oh, good. Did you know you can make animals with your fingers and hands? Can you make hamsters? Well, no, Morris, that's rather difficult. But there are lots of other animals you can make. How? How? Well, I know a rhyme to show you how. Carol's going to help me say it. Shadow animals. Find a bright light and a clean white wall and you can make animals, large and small. Oh. Wriggle your fingers and move your hands. Here comes an ostrich up from the sands. Oh, I see. Two hands together make a butterfly. Close up your fingers, a bird in the sky. Tweet, tweet. <laughs> Finger and thumb make a bull with horns. Mm. Add one fist and a snail forms. Or a caterpillar. Two arms together soon become a swan. Oh. Take both hands away, the animals have gone. Oh, that's clever. I'm going to show Leroy. Morris, where are you? Oh, where can that naughty little hamster be? If he's not careful, he's going to miss our next story. Morris? Oh, well, I'm going to sit down and listen. The Skinny Pig Percy was the skinniest pig you've ever seen. No matter what he ate, he never seemed to put on any weight. Farmer Giles was so worried about him that he made an appointment with the animal doctor to find out what was wrong. On the day that Percy and Farmer Giles were due to see the doctor, Percy was very nervous. As he sat in the waiting room, 
he looked at Farmer Giles in fright. Oh, Farmer Giles, <coughs> he said, what can be wrong with me? <coughs> you never see pigs with all their ribs showing. <coughs> oh, don't worry, Percy, said the farmer. I'm sure the doctor will tell us. The door opened and the doctor called Percy into his surgery. Now sit down, Percy, and tell me what's wrong. Well, <coughs> said Percy, I can't seem to put on any weight. <coughs> and all my friends are lovely and big. <coughs> Let me check you over. I'm sure it's quite simple. Aha! exclaimed the doctor. You haven't been eating any apples, have you? No, I haven't, said Percy shyly. Well then, plenty of fresh apples, my lad, and you'll be nice and big like your friends. Yippee, <coughs> exclaimed Percy. I'll tell Farmer Giles. <coughs> I'm sure he'll be really pleased. <coughs> Come and see me again next week, said the doctor, and I'll give you another check-up. Be sure to eat your apples now. Oh, yes, <coughs> said Percy and he ran out of the surgery, laughing with joy. <laughs> when they got home, Farmer Giles took Percy to the orchard. There, he said. Look at all those nice, rosy red apples. Percy munched away happily. <laughs> A week went by, and Percy visited the doctor again. Why, Percy, you look splendid. You've no ribs showing, and you've got a beautiful big red face. You don't need any more help from me. But be sure to keep on eating your apples. Of course I will, <coughs> said Percy. You know, an apple a day really does keep the doctor away, said the doctor. Smiling all over his big red face, Percy skipped merrily home to have his tea. And you'll never guess what he had. Yes, a bag of lovely, juicy red apples. Morris! Where are you, Morris? Here I am. Oh. Hello, Doris. Hello, Morris. I mean, Morris, where on earth have you been? I've been counting the animals in the song. Which song? Come into the ark, said Noah to the animals. Come into the ark, my pets. <laughs> oh, that song. Well, how many are there? Now, let me see. Um, two cows, that's two. Um, two cats, that's... Uh... Four. Oh, don't rush me, Doris. Two cows and two cats makes uh, four. Mm. Mm. And then there are some butterflies. That's... Oh, um, Morris, um, we'll just have to count the animals later. It's time for one last song. Oh, can I join in? Yes, of course you can. The song is Ride a Cock Horse. music wherever she goes Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady upon a white horse with rings on her fingers and bells on her toes she shall have music wherever she goes One more time now! Woo! Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross To see a fine lady upon a white horse With rings on her fingers and bells on her toes She shall have music wherever she goes Goodbye everyone! Goodbye everyone! We'll be back soon! Oh, no. Bye!
bobbins, that's 24. Two earwigs, that's um, 25. No, 26. Morris. Oh, Morris, that's 27. Morris. Oh, sorry. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>